believers you are welcome to believers global tv if you know you are truly a believer then this is the right place for you this is believers global tv on this channel we create christian content that will edify your spirit that will build you up in the way of the lord and all the contents that we create on this channel are purely christian content so please subscribe to this channel and turn on the post notification bell so that each time we release any content at all, you'll be notified. The Bible says our faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is what you hear that builds you up. It is what you hear that transforms your life. It is what you hear and you engage that brings result into your life. So please, as you're about to listen to this message, please, when you listen, Make sure that your spirit, your mind, your soul is part of this and let your heart be open, open, listen with a heart of faith, listen with a believing heart. Let there be no doubt in your mind. Let there be no doubt in, doubt in your heart. So as we are about to listen to this, I pray that this message will profit you in the name of Jesus. So without wasting much of our time, let's get into the message. God bless you. I want you to listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Many years ago, I went to the Lord in prayer asking him the secrets that can really, really cause a man to get into the heart of God. Because I knew that more than money, more than anointing, the real secret to becoming great in the kingdom is when you touch the heart of God. I've read my Bible a bit and there were a few people in scripture who really touched God to his heart and his response to them was miraculous. Their lives changed. Men like Abraham, men like David, men like John the Beloved. There were people who did certain things that touched God to his heart. Men like the centurion, men like Nicodemus there were people who really went deep beyond his hand and touched his heart that was where God began to teach me about the mystery of sacrifice believers I want you to listen please first Samuel chapter 1 and verse 21 the Bible says and the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow the man Elkanah as a priest he went with all his house not alone and went to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints the Bible says they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice something began to happen in my life I listened to Dr. Mudok Mike Mudok I've listened to many of the fathers that God has granted them grace. They've been able to break through certain realms. And I took out time to study because I really wanted to know this for myself. And then I also wanted it for this great ministry. And I began a journey with God. And when I learned the power of sacrifice, I remember God began to test me with certain instructions every once and again and I, I i wanted to know what is it about sacrifice that touches the heart of god is it the money or the clothes is it your life what is it about the sacrifice of jesus that touched the heart of god that translated to the salvation of all men what is it about the sacrifice of his willingness to lay isaac down what is it about the sacrifice of elijah that brought fire from heaven what is it about the sacrifice of one ancient king slaughtering his son and the bible says an indignation rose up to heaven what is it about the sacrifice that happened in the days of samson coming manoah now and the angel rose through the sacrifice and went to heaven what is it about sacrifice that the bible says a few people bound themselves and said they will not eat they will not drink anything until paul was dead and I found out that sacrifice is a mysterious law in the spirit. A law that has been abused 
unfortunately a law by which people have practiced without understanding to their peril but a law that if and when understood can produce a miracle out of anybody this is a law that is respected among occultists and satanists a spiritual law that is respected a law that even heathenistic people respect sacrifice is one of the four pillars upon which love sits on now watch this there are four pillars upon which love the word love which is the nature of God the love of God rests upon four pillars the Bible says oh the length the breadth the depth the height of the love of God and it says for the saints to know it and this came to me by revelation of the spirit the four pillars upon which love sits on number one is called passion number two is called commitment number three is called pleasure number four is called sacrifice let me take it again the four pillars upon which love rests on if you want to know love completely you must see it expressed in these four dimensions number one passion it's impossible for love to be there without passion number two commitment the staying power the power to remain number three pleasure anything that has love comes with it pleasure and then number four sacrifice of all of these four the leader as far as describing love is concerned is sacrifice greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend are we together now because i wanted to know why god would demand from people in my work i remember the first time god gave us an instruction as a ministry and we emptied our account as a ministry and many times god had given me this instruction I, I mean, I didn't have a problem giving, but I wanted to know because I wanted to have an understanding. Why does God demand sacrifice from men? I mean, this is something that he has everything. Why does God demand sacrifice? Not just sacrifice of money, but sacrifice of your life, your time. It looks like every time God sees sacrifice, he takes the individual seriously. Hallelujah. And then I began to study on this subject of sacrifice. And when I found it, I rejoiced because I knew that I had found my way out of many things, including mediocrity, including pain, including financial calamities. I want to share with you this. This is very important. There are four things. Sacrifice, the demand to give. Every time God demands that an individual gives resources, proceeds of your strength your time your energy what is his goal behind it i want to tell you this sacrifice and giving generally is one of the ways that we conquer idolatry and materialism listen to me every once in a while in your life god will demand something within you and the goal is not really the money he did not kill isaac later on but isaac had died in the heart of abraham are we together the only way to deal with idolatry and the, the plague of materialism is that every once in a while God will demand something from you something that rattles the place the, the place that materialism wants to take in your life I have found this to be a healthy way of living God will always demand as a way of checkmating idolatry do you know why because you see because of the works of our hands we place value on anything that we dissipate intellectual energy energy in terms of time energy in terms of whatever to have for instance if i give you a hundred thousand as a gift you can easily give it because no effort it came as a gift but if you receive a salary of a hundred thousand a hundred thousand as a gift and a hundred thousand as salary are not the same because on one is no effort no labor no nothing on another is reward it's a product of your creativity your passion if god asks you to give the two hundred thousands he will want the one that is a a not just a gift are we together is the same principle isaac used for jacob he had cattle at the back of his house but he said my son i want to bless you i'm coming there but go to the field far to the field 
Don't receive it as a gift from anybody. I'm not in lack. It's a principle. Go to the field. Go and use your effort. Catch the wild animal. Bring it back home. Cook it. Let me eat that one. My soul will be delighted and I will bless you. For a long time, it did not make sense to me. I mean, you can imagine. Isaac was there. Rebecca was there. It was her that ended up preparing what he ate. He would have simply said, my wife, I am hungry. Please go and make something for me. It is never about money. It is never about releasing whatever it is. It's something. It's a spiritual principle. And Esau went down and got this and returned and he made it himself. The mother did not help him make it. The father wanted to eat the one that he made by himself. He said, doing that will delight my soul and I want to release something upon you. Every time God instructs believers to come with sacrifices either of time, energy, and resources, I want you to know that it's beyond God wanting to impoverish you. God does not reduce people. Are we together now? God does not reduce people. It is inaccurate understanding of givings like sacrifice that reduces people or manipulative teachings of such and then people innocently respond to it and they find out that there is no harvest. I remember the first time God placed as a ministry when this instruction came. One week after that, God did something in this ministry that to God be the glory. I mean, it was, it was a miraculous manifestation of his hand. We began to see the hand of God in mysterious ways. You can imagine those days in Zaria. I mean, not to demean the region, but I mean, how much really can come out of there to run a ministry that was increasing over 95% of the support, the giving that was coming, was coming outside of Zaria and even outside of the nation. I began to see strange manifestations of God. God speaking to people and instructing them, come and bless this ministry. Come and do this. Come and do that. And then that statement that God is not a man that he should lie. Truly, truly, my life began to change. I had studied about finances. I had studied about liftings. I had studied about the blessing. Once in a while, God will come to me. Do you know, there were times when I would sense that there was danger around my life, around the ministry. And every time, this, this was, it was my, my consistent work with God. Every time there looked like it was a, some kind of danger, I would go to the Lord in prayer and suddenly he would begin to prompt me, bring a sacrifice. And I'm saying, Lord, this one now, what for again? I, I'm sensing danger and God would demand something from me. The third thing that made God, I noticed in my work with God, every time I was ending a season, my birthdays, end of year, God will always demand a sacrifice. Then I began to study these patterns. That this thing, and for every time I obeyed God, God did something miraculous in my life. There were times that I would pray and pray for hours. What is this thing I'm sensing? There is a negative spiritual cloud. It's like, it's like some kind of plot by darkness. And when I'm done praying, I will still sense that turbulence and unrest. But the moment a sacrifice goes, it's like calm returns. And then I began to learn that these are spiritual patterns. And it is because the saints do not know it. They have been cheated in many regards. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. Now write this down. Your sacrifice unto God is number one, an expression of love. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of love and value for him above all things. Please write it down. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of your love for him and the value that you have placed on him above all things. We usually invest our time and our resources around the things that matter to us most. So when God places a demand upon you to give, 
especially sacrifice, whether of your time, of your resources, among the many things that he seeks, ladies and gentlemen, hear me, is to test your love for him. To see if truly he is exalted in your life above every other thing. It is easy to sing it, be lifted, be exalted. It is easy to say you are number one in my life. But the real proof of God's position in your life is tested in the place of sacrifice. Anything you cannot give God is above you. Anything you cannot give God is above you. An uncomfortable truth. Anything you cannot give God. If I cannot give God my car, my house, my money, it is above me. The meaning of that is that that is what I am worshipping. One of the ways to choose between God and mammon is to use one to serve the other. You can use God to serve mammon or you can use mammon to serve God. Unfortunately, many have used spirituality to serve money. Preaching because of money. Doing all of this because desperate for it. It doesn't matter. They compromise on spirituality because they want money. When God demands from you to sacrifice, what he's doing is he's helping you maintain his position as the highest priority in your life. Let me tell you the truth. Most believers do not know how much they are attached to things. Materialism, I have taught you, is not just having materials. You don't have to be rich to be materialistic. An obsession for money, for things that is above your passion for God. Claiming you love God is cheap talk. It is when you are able to lay down, that is proof of love. Imagine if the father kept saying, I love you. My creation, I love you. Sons and daughters, I love you. But he said, let me demonstrate that love. He sent his son. And when Jesus walked upon the earth, he died a gruesome death. And he did that with joy in his heart as proof that he loved us. Now, we know indeed that we've been loved by God because of the cross. The cross reminds us that God truly loves us. Is someone learning? Someone looks at me and says, Apostle, I want to love God the way you love God. Let me tell you the truth. My life has been episodes of laying down everything in my life. That's how I ascended that height of love. When it has to do with the business of love is beyond just passion. You can roll on the ground and stand up and you are far from him. He says they draw nigh to me with their lips. Is that in your Bible? But their hearts are far. There are many prayer warriors who don't love God. They can pray. There are many people who sing love songs. There are many preachers who preach love songs. But the moment it has to do with laying down something that costs you, the king said, I will not give God anything that does not cost me. Hallelujah. Truly, you want God to become your priority? It is impossible to become a lover of God without going through the school of sacrifice. He will demand something from your life that can become an idol. Number two, why does God demand from us sacrifice? Your sacrifice is an expression of honor. Your sacrifice to God is an expression of honor. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30, the B part. First Samuel chapter 2. It says, wherefore, I, I'm, I'm really concerned about the B part, but now the Lord saith, be it far from me for them that honor me this is so true i will honor but they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed can i tell you ladies and gentlemen god honors every god loves everybody but not everybody has the same place as far as his dealings is concerned no there are people god places priority upon because they have learned to lay down everything for his namesake. Sacrifice is an expression of honor for God. Honor for God. Honor for God. You cannot see him, but when he demands that you bring a sacrifice, let me tell you sincerely, it is because God wants to test how much you honor him. To honor a man means to regard the person. Look at me please, ladies and gentlemen. When they tell you a personality is coming to your house, someone you place high regard on, what's the first thing that you do? You make sure that you fix your house. Sometimes you will need to quickly clean things up and make sure that you set table, you bring the best of your plates. 
the best of the meals that you can find you make everything you make the room conducive and you know very very excellent and then when the person comes you are happy and the person sees your display of honor especially when they recognize it and commend you for it that glow on your face it makes every sacrifice worth the while many do that to men they do that to politicians they do that to apostle joshua selman but they will not do that to god no how do you love a man's creature more than the creator himself how do you respect the creature more than the creator you see that now honor when you honor a man you will give and give sacrificially and it does not matter hallelujah there are people who certain visitors come to them and say i want to go somewhere and they literally will cancel their schedule for the day and say i am driving you i'm going with you wherever it is i'm going with you as a proof of honor but many would not do that for God. Those who know, understand sacrifice are those who express honor to the Lord. Now listen. Number three. Sacrifice I wrote here is one of the mysteries that control divine intervention. When God demands a sacrifice from you, it is because it is he wants you to engage one of the mysteries in the kingdom that controls divine intervention intervention in first kings chapter 18 from verse 30 to 33 divine intervention it is true elijah said to all the people come near unto me remember elijah and the prophets of bell he's about to command fire god wants to demonstrate his lordship over the land that he's king of kings and to stop god's people from being oppressed as a result of jezebel and her prophets but it came on the wings of sacrifice the bible says he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down next verse the bible says elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be my name uh -huh. The Bible says, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. 33. The Bible says, and he put wood in order and cut the bullocks. I mean, what do the animals have to do with the presence of God coming down? I understand the altar being set after the tribes of Israel. I mean, what is God looking for with bullocks? And he cut them into pieces he laid them on the wood and he filled them with water and then he called upon the god of israel and the bible says the god of israel answered by fire fire came and licked up everything can i tell you the truth one of the mysteries of divine intervention is sacrifice when things go bad in your life when it is time to turn certain things around sacrifice is one of those mysteries that has brought people out of financial calamities brought people out of health conditions i remember years ago or roberts of blessed memory listening to him teach he was teaching in a benihin meeting and he said one time he was sick it was so mysterious the doctors had said he was going to die they said dr roberts we're sorry you may not leave and he called one of his secretaries and said how much do i have in so 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 account and when they said it he said transfer everything i think to some mission agency or so and the people were surprised said do as i've instructed and as soon as they did that a miracle happened that night and Ora robert would live many many more years before he would later pass on to be with the lord sacrifice I have practiced this as a principle and commanded many supernatural interventions there are business people who do not know this principle there are church leaders who do not know this principle there are many people who do not know how to provoke in divine intervention using the key of sacrifice it's a spiritual principle that has been manipulated by demons you go and meet somebody some herbalist somewhere and say you know what i need this political position i need you to upturn some court case i need whatever it is and they will look at you and take a deep breath and say are you ready to do everything we say to do this thing you are seeing or this possibility is doable but are you ready for the condition 
and sometimes they give all kinds of ungodly conditions bring someone you love the most your wife your son your daughter whatever it is and people go that far to do some of those things and you find out that doors keep opening for them in ways that you cannot imagine sacrifice is a mystery that controls divine intervention number four why does God demand sacrifice from the saints are you ready because it is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing please write it down you need to hear this one sacrifice is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing there is something called the sworn blessing genesis 22 15 to 18 and the angel of the lord called unto abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself have i sworn saith the lord for because thou hast done this thing what is the, this thing thou hast not withheld that is what you have done you have been so lavish in bringing your future bringing your all your only son that you had to wait about 25 years to have him because thou hast not withheld thy son thine only son he says this is what i have sw have sworn to you that in blessing i will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies 18 and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice ladies and gentlemen i want you to believe that there is something called the sworn blessing we also call it the commanded blessing numbers 23 19 and 20. it's important that i teach this so that many people will understand that sacrifices are not just about dropping something that costs you it is your understanding that gives value to what you are doing god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent had he not said and shall he not do it had he not spoken and shall he not make it good the next verse please behold i have received commandment to bless and he had blessed and i cannot reverse it there are things that god brings upon the lives of people on account of their diligence on account of their sacrifice god will say things to them through men that sticks to their life forever hallelujah i wish i had the liberty to share with you some testimonies honestly this principle has worked wonders in my life one time the lord gave a an instruction to sow a seed as a ministry i remember after that time god began to open phenomenal doors phenomenal doors and then god came to me one time and gave me an instruction to give a very huge sacrifice and it was at that time it was something that was really costly do you know when i did that there was a gift that god planted in my heart that gift of joy the peace of god that nothing that money is not always about money multiplying no there are some things money cannot buy you've heard my story that one time many years ago you know um i had one i had an issue with with, with the bank you know my account was hacked that time and you know the little i had then everything everything just went like that tried to put in my ATM the thing did not work and that was the end of it I remember by the the you know the, the following Monday went to the bank ah you know the manager and the things they were saying ah what is all this going on now what is you know what is going on and they now said all the people who were staying with me who have to come and write reports and all you know those things I said no 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 these people are innocent they have no business with what has happened they said well this is what we do they have to call our office in Lagos. Cut this long story short. I was there having the meeting. God is my witness. And then the Lord spoke to me. True story. And he said, my son, what are you doing here? In my mind, I was saying, what am I doing here? My money just disappeared I'm, and I'm there finding what? True story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. 
I mean, I need to find out what is going on here. And then the Lord spoke to me. I remember that is this your money or is my money? And I said, Lord, you are the Lord of everything. And the Lord asked me to get up from that meeting and walk out and go away. And that was the end of it. I told them, you know what? This case is over now. Oh, no, 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 no. Our integrity. I said, that's not my business. I'm on my way out. The owner of my life and includes everything has demanded that I walk away. Case closed. I mean it before the God of heaven. I walked out of that place. It was not a small money. Oh. And the peace that surpasses all understanding, that was where I truly received the gift of peace. There are some things that you can never have until the realm you get into the realm of sacrifice peace joy these are things a job cannot give these are things money cannot buy i remember walking and i was just singing to the lord telling him how much i love him and i meant it from my heart i knew i was not lying because it had been tested it wasn't god that did that but just the fact that he could instruct me to get up and leave something and i i did that was it Hallelujah. God began to multiply this ministry. God began to show mercy. And I will tell you one testimony for your hearing. One day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today, I will start raising men to bless you. Not bless the ministry. I will start raising men to bless you. I was praying. I still remember just walking around praying in the spirit. Occasionally, I would, I would check my phones. And I remember that time an alert came. I had never received, you know, a lump sum of that kind of money. It just came to me. And I was saying, what in the world is this? I said, let me, let me calm down. Maybe it's a mistake somebody made before I touch something. And later on, they come to harass me and, and so on and so forth. Yes, it was a real estate company. I remember the name that sent it real estate company three months later the same amount was sent again three months later the same amount was sent again and that was all for the next one year at least 50 of those kind of amounts just that very amount like that i said god what are you doing what is the name of this what is the meaning of this thing you are doing he that honors me i will honor you see that but he that despises me please listen I'm not telling you something somebody taught me. This is my life. God began to open doors for koinonia in a strange and miraculous way. I mean, people will call from all over the world, literally, and be patient for days. We had to start reaching the bank to say, listen, you need to help us spread our platforms for giving because people want to give. Can you imagine someone will be disturbing you for over two weeks and say, I've not given till now. I've asked you people to do this. I need to give my $500, my $1,000. I tried. People even became victims of scammers. But they were still patient. How does someone keep begging you and saying he wants to give? People started traveling. I'm not exaggerating. Traveling from across the globe. They will come inconvenience themselves, land in Lagos, take a flight come through Kaduna and come down to Zaria, not for prayer. They were instructed by God. We came all the way from America, from this place, from England, and God said we should come and do this. Others will come and give and say, God said we should collect the ministry's account number. Let's verify so that when we go back, let your power, power to prosper, rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me power to prosper was learning something about God I was seeing in my life the things that Ora Robert spoke about I was seeing in my life some of the things that God's general said 
so I can do ministry with integrity without manipulating people. How will you call people to come and fund what you are doing without manipulating them? You are not the only preacher on earth. How will they suddenly turn their attention to you and bless you? I had found my key. Gather my saints unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. The next time the Lord will come to me, he gave me an instruction. He said, I'm going to be sending you to God's servant. Prepare this. When I send, I rejoice in my heart. Now I had seen it work. I know that it works. That morning, I remember waking up and God just told me today is the day with joy. I got everything, got the next flight. I was on my way to Lagos, went to Canaan land, went to do whatever I had to do. When I finished by the grace of God, with joy in my heart, I knew that God is not a man. Those who don't know this are the ones talking against it. When you have lived in the reality of these principles and you become a living proof, if you are faking it and pretending it, you will be lying till you become poor. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? After I did, I remember I was going to get into the car and the Lord asked me to, he said, come out, place your hand on that ground. I placed my hand on that ground and he said, my son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. I remember those days, I wrote out, if I recall, the name of 10 mission agencies. 10 mission agencies. God gave me one of the instructions. I'm sharing some of these things. Some of you are hearing it for the first time. And God gave me heavy instructions. I mean, literally, almost like everything to those mission agencies. I did that with joy in my heart. And I stepped into another level of the help of God. And I said, if this is how God works, I conquer greed in my life. No, I will not withhold. I know there is a difference between waste. If you are doing this principally with money as your end, you will be poor. Did you hear what I said? Let me tell you how it works. God must be your focus, not money. Now, most people, what they do is like a spiritual transactional bribe. As they are holding 1,000, in their mind now, they are thinking 10,000. Who else do I bribe since I cannot go to someone to scam me? Let me come and drop it in an offering basket, hoping that God will suddenly double it overnight. God gives you money, but he gives you more than what money can buy. When your heart, let me tell you the missing ingredient, many believers give, but their heart is on carnal returns, not God. Not God. Not God. Not God. God has given me many very dangerous instructions. Financial instructions that I've done that sometimes I thank God I'm the only one that knows about it. Because I wonder who, who ever believed that I did such a thing. Let me tell you with all due respect. Most, anyway. God knows oh, There are things you do ba, that touches the heart of God. I made up my mind that I was going to prosper myself and that I was going to raise a people who love God, but people who have conquered materialism. I hate carnality, materialism, this obsession for money. But at the same time, I also hate poverty. That people should not just be economically ridiculed by life. There are many other aspects to it. Productivity, creativity, I've taught you. Relationship, value. My goodness, but sacrifice is an irrefutable spiritual principle. When God comes to you, he comes to bless you. He really comes to bless you. I don't know how many episodes of those demands God has made from my life. There are some of them that have become covenant seasons. My birthdays, koinonia, you know, end of year, and all of this. Right now, as I'm standing now, he's told me my own. And I came here with joy because I know that my life is about to shift. God, there is nothing that God demands from you. Please hear me. I'm speaking to the global family. That is for his benefit. No. If God is looking for money, he will not talk to you. No. How much can you give him? You see that now? 
I need to teach you so that it's not just about dropping seeds. It's a wrong narrative and a wrong mentality. And sometimes I confess that we pastors, maybe it's because of the physical money. Everybody does not care. It doesn't matter whether people understand or not. Just bring it. You bring it without revelation. I assure you it will not work. Truly, not many people will tell you this. You give just as a, as a bribe unto God. You will not get anything. Your attention must be on Jesus and the integrity of his word. And then allow him to surprise you and do things for you that you cannot imagine sacrifice that's what brought some of us to this this level that god has helped us by grace and by the spirit koinonia will never be doing the things that we are doing now by the privilege of god's grace no this one is beyond the realm of tithes and offering there are things you do to touch the heart of god all blessings come from god through men to men but those men don't come on their own there are mysteries that bring them to you Jesus did not call the three wise men the magi to come to him he was a baby but there was something that was done in the spirit on account of an instruction and the Bible says the magi rose holding gold frankincense and myrrh as a baby they did not consider that he was a baby they worshiped him and they dropped those things this thing does not happen because you are a man of God. It does not happen just because you are, you know, whatever it is. No. Hallelujah. There are sacrifices I've made for the next level of koinonia. There are sacrifices I've made for the next level of my life. This ministry you see, and with all due respect, without, without being, being, you know, mistaking me for pride, we stand today upon sacrifice it is not what we do once and for all it has become my lifestyle nobody lives what works there is he that scattereth and yet increases and i have seen all kinds of things that god has done sometimes it's not safe to share certain testimonies you know but just for you to know that this mysterious god there is nothing in my life that will ever make me give up on the mystery of sacrifice it has kept God's position intact in my heart by dethroning material things you know you get to a point where God begins to help you and let me tell you the truth the tendency for material things get into your heart and then God demands that they go and as soon as they leave his position remains intact in your heart there is nothing in my life today and I stand, I'm speaking to the globe. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing in my life today as I stand before you that I cannot give God. Nothing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for staying to the end of this message. I know your life has been blessed. I know your soul has been blessed by this message. And I encourage you, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please, oh, I'm saying, I'm begging now, oh, Please subscribe to this channel and also like this message you have just listened to and also share with others. In that way, you are also doing the work of an evangelist. So, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. Let someone know about Jesus because you are still breathing. God bless you. See you in another video. Bye. 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 <laughs>